Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing really, really, really well. I'm again gonna say this at the start of the video. Uh, my equipment broke when I moved, so I'm dealing with a lot of buffering and a lot of random stuff. Um, so just know <laughs> that that's what's happening. Anyways, Gabby Hanna, we have a new update. Now our last Gabby Hanna video, that was a little bit intense. God's Hole, ring a bell. <laughs> Quite an intense one. Um, Gabby has been doing these Gabby Hanna diaries on her main channel, which is interesting because she normally had her vlog channel, but I guess just maximizing who can watch it. Um, she has announced that she's one year sober, which I think is really, really, really great. Um, and I'm very, very, very stoked for her. I think that that's great. And also the last time, the last memory I have of Gabby Hanna is her being like, wake, bake, smoke, paint, you know, weed is life, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, she's rebranded as, you know, a Christian, nice. So, we're we're let, let's let's hear what she has to say. Let's hear what she has to say. But I think that this is a great thing. Everyone knows their limits. Everyone knows what's best for them. And good for her. Good for her. Let's hear what she has to say. Let's get to it. One year soby, soby, sober. Gabby Hanna. When I was high, like I was very okay, wait. Okay, hey, we don't want to listen. Smoking when I was around 27 years old. Before that, I tried it a handful of times, but I was just like really not fun to be around when I was high. Like I was very. Also, we talked about her moderate or her cameo, right? And it was like eleven thousand dollars for a business cameo. People have informed me that her regular cameo is like three hundred and fifty dollars. Anyone want a video from Gabby Hanna? The price of that three hundred and fifty dollars stereotypical, can't string a sentence together, can't keep a thought straight, smoker. <laughs> then one day I went to this influencer's birthday party, which means I went to like a sponsored event and there was this guy, this vendor who was just handing out weed cartridges. He was giving out one at a time, but for whatever reason, he gave me like six and then I was with somebody and they gave him six too. So then my friend comes over and then he leaves his behind. So all of a sudden I have 12 weed cartridges in my house. What, is that like a weed? um pen like a like that cartridges i think that's a i think that's a weed pen i think that's a weed pen i think it is but i didn't smoke them for a really long time so fast forward a little bit and i'm going through some stuff you know typical <laughs> And there were a couple nights where I started drinking alone. And right away, I was just like, nope. Okay, so it is the cartridges. Okay. Nope. Uh-uh. This is not going to be me. This is not going to be my life. I'd rather be a drug addict. <laughs> so I started smoking by myself at night. And mostly I would just sit on my couch, put on a show, and draw or write. It was so easy to get kind of lost in the work. But I also want to say that it was not fun or enjoyable. I was always scared. I was super paranoid. Like every little sound freaked me out. I remember one night I was in bed and I saw a teddy bear laying on the ground. And I knew it was a teddy bear. For a fact, I knew it was a teddy bear. But for some reason inside, I was just like, but what if it's a dead body? So a a couple years in, this became a nightly routine for me. At this point, very much the unwind at the end of the day with a glass of wine type smoker. So then I move into my- I'm so obsessed with the amount of time she's putting pothead on the screen. House and things got kind of dark and chaotic for the first time. What's so crazy is again, the last time I've seen her on social media, all she was talking about was how amazing weed is for her and for people. And then now she's like, it ruined my life, which again, you come to those conclusions, good for her, good for her for being one year sober. I think when someone knows they need to go sober and they're able to do it or at least attempt it, I think it's a an amazing accomplishment. Um, but yeah, it's a crazy turnaround because the last time I saw her, it was very different. I'm in literally six years I stopped posting. Like literally for six years from the week I started posting, I did not miss an upload. So I go a few weeks without uploading and somebody suggests that I do vlog miss. So I'm like, okay, let me give this a try. So I try filming and it's kind of hard. Like I didn't, it didn't feel natural. I was really uncomfortable and I was kind of out of the rhythm of doing it. Like I was on such a train for a minute that- uh What is with this sound effect? And also trains are a sore topic for me. <laughs> I don't like train talk, but also the sound effect is crazy. <laughs> Um, once it crashed, I was kind of scared to get back. Turn this shit off. First time literally ever. I also, as someone who has dabbled, um, I hate cartridges. I hate them. They are incredibly fake, for the most part, the ones that I've had, um, where whenever I'm doing them, I'm like, mm, mm, 
I don't know if this is real. And there's been times I remember like two years ago or like a year ago or something, I had a cartridge and I was taking it for like a week straight. And I was like, hold on. The high is lasting maybe three minutes and then you have to top it up again. And I was like, wait. So then I like stopped doing it and I'm like, whoa, I feel like fully sane again. Like I feel like functional. And then I was like, I started digging into it, researching it and stuff. And I find out that there's a, like a high likely chance that the cartridge that I had was like, um, uh, very synthetic. Like it wasn't even, it like wasn't even like the actual thing. And I was like, Mm. So that's why I kept having to top it up every couple minutes. And that's also why it, it gave the same like high as like sniffing poppers. You know what I mean? Can I say all this on here? I don't fucking know. Um, if anyone has ever done poppers, like that, like 20 second rush, I feel the rush do, do your touch, was like what this cartridge is, was doing. And so when she's talking about this, I'm like, ooh, I felt that on cartridges. Um, so yeah, everyone be careful if you're ever doing cartridges. Um, be careful. I smoked before I filmed. Like I'd never filmed high before. Maybe once. <laughs> Actually, definitely once. So I'm high. I'm talking out loud with nobody but myself, the camera, and God to hear what I'm saying. I was able to actually uncover my own thoughts. So like in therapy, for example, even though I was there in this, you know, judgment-free zone to talk about things, I just couldn't get there. I am a very, very, very socially anxious person. And I know that if you're watching this and you literally only know me from the internet, you probably, maybe not probably, but maybe you might not guess that. I'm literally in a room by myself talking to an inanimate object. So even in this small room with a therapist, I was just like so high strung and guarded that I couldn't actually get to the root of anything. But I would take a hit, I would turn on my camera and then I would just start talking. And when no more words came out, I just stopped. And then I'd watch it back and I'd edit it. And it felt like I finally had someone I could trust to talk to. I'd watch myself pouring my heart out to myself, saying all the things out loud that I didn't even actually know that I was thinking because my thoughts were always racing so fast that I couldn't even grab a hold of them. I'd edit it, watch it back, and I would feel peace for a moment, like a, a genuine therapy session. I was able to stop masking. I was able to see myself without a mask. And I started genuinely falling in love with myself in a radical self-acceptance way. At this point, I'm like addicted to this feeling. Every night I can't wait to get high, film, edit. And then things started getting even darker around me. So I started smoking earlier. This editing is making me feel like I'm high. Earlier until eventually I'm starting at 11 a.m. and staying high the rest of the day with no days off. I would just smoke by myself and cry and dance, and paint, and journal, and cry, and stretch, and cry, and work out, and cry, and make eggs and toast, and cry. <laughs> and then I started having heart issues. I would literally be sitting and my heart rate would jump to over 200 beats per minute with no physical activity. Like I'm literally sitting on the couch. I even at one point was wearing a heart monitor. This looks like I'm like really suffering and I'm literally not. I think that I just smoked too much weed. My skin was bad, my diet was bad, and frankly, I was weird. I was really weird. Like me, like baseline, I'm weird. Living in this alternate reality in my brain completely shut off from almost all social contact with nowhere to be and anybody to hold me accountable to doing anything, um, I was weird. So all that to say, things started off pretty innocently um, and spiraled. Weed transformed to this little thing I did to help me draw and paint and relax to being a crutch. Actually, Crutch is such an understatement. It was like, it was just an absolute necessity for me. I'm recognizing this and I battled myself for probably a year at least on whether or not I needed to quit. And it was the same cycle I'd quit. Okay. Um, I think it's great that she's opening up about her experience. I think that there, I think that that's always great when someone opens up about their experience. Um, it sounds like she was taking shrimps, <laughs> like, but I'm going to take it at the baseline that she was just taking weed. Um, 
you know, because she's saying it was. So, you know, um, her experience that she is describing, you know, can happen to people. Like, and it, you know, these different levels, obviously, they're, you know, happen differently for every single person. And I, again, I think it's very important for her to raise awareness of, you know, experiences, good or bad. Um, and having an open conversation about drugs, I think it's very important. Um, a lot of the things she's describing are very, um, shocking, very shocking. Um, you know, okay. For a couple weeks, a few weeks, even a month, a couple months. And then I'd be like, you know what? Let me see how it feels to just smoke again. And then I'd smoke and I'd be like, wow, this is so good for me. It's just about balance and moderation. This time I'd have boundaries. I can only smoke, you know, this many times a week and between this hour and this hour and only this much. And then I'd smoke again and wow, I'm like, I need both sober me and high me. We, we gotta yin and yang. Like this is a team, we gotta work together. And then before you know it, you get the point. And all the while, the spiritual battle keeps popping up. And before you're like, oh my gosh, a lot of people do look at weed as a spiritual tool. Like, especially if you're talking to like somebody who smokes a lot, especially if you're talking to somebody in California, they'll tell you that weed is a very spiritual experience. It really helps them connect. I'm gonna do an entire separate video for any Christians or non-Christians about sort of these common arguments or justifications. Oh my God, I almost almost forgot for a second that this the, the broad topic here is about Christianity. Because we've just gone to, on the screen, should Christians smoke weed? I forgot that that's what this overarching point is. Again, I um, I can very much so respect anyone having an open conversation like this. Um, all, you know, there's definitely, if I'm, if I'm being completely transparent with you, there's definitely things in my head right now that make me feel like she's painting things in a certain light because of her new rebrand as a Christian. And a lot of Christians are very against smoking weed, which is very ironic because the two most religious people I know in my entire life, um, not my nana and granda, no, the two most religious people I know in my life who are to do with my friends um, are the biggest stoners you will ever meet in your entire life. And mom, if you're still watching, think of one of my friends from home family you know the christian people i know are the most fucking high people you've ever met in your entire life so i i'm very aware that a lot of this conversation as well is like stemming from the you know the idea that christians are very against alcohol drugs um and this is kind of feeding into that even more however that is in my mind but i am just going to take at face value that everything she's saying here is genuinely just from the heart questions surrounding whether or not you should smoke basically so make sure to check that video out if you're having any type of like internal debate and it might give you some insight it might not but it's at least worth having a conversation and listening to somebody else talk about it and then i get served this video on youtube from somebody who was <laughs> y'all are not gonna do this in the chat someone just commented someone just commented and was like jesus and god is <laughs> it was fucking nab fuck you nab Neb commented and was like, Jesus and God is her blunt rotation dream. You motherfuckers need to learn to behave. You motherfuckers. Drag me down. You little. <laughs> Say your comments and I read them out and then I get in trouble. Oh my God, Lunar, you just quoted like a really old video we did. Oh my God, Lunar. You just quoted, whoa, my legs are fucking dead. Um, Lunar just quoted, there is no smoking in America. Who remembers? We did a video on world's strictest fucking parents. It's not called world's strictest fucking parents. I don't know why I felt the need to swear there. And the, I think it was the dad was like, there's no smoking. There's no smoking in America. <laughs> I know Jesus was going through those blocks. No, no stop commenting because then i'm gonna go on a tangent i'm gonna make a couple jokes about jesus i'm gonna go on a fucking stand-up comedy thing about god and then i'm gonna get trouble fuck you all exploring their holes to get like why would you comment that why would you comment that because i'm gonna read it i i'm gonna get in trouble for it and you're the little bitch that dragged me down with it there is no smoking in america <laughs> and also weed works very differently for you know everyone um it works very differently for everyone you know um 
some person's good experience to some person's bad experience. But I think you should be very open to hearing someone saying that they're sober and why they're sober. You know what I mean? I think it's very, it's, it's important. Um, again, it raises awareness and I, I think that that's good. And stop commenting about God's hole. Because you know that I can't hold back the jokes. You know that I can't hold back the jokes. Stop. Stop. Chat. Chat. Someone said, why my chat stop? I wish mine did. Anyways, we're going to continue. I'm just going to stop reading chat because you're all being so misbehaved. No. <laughs> <laughs> Kirby's thick thighs just said holy trinity <laughs> whole why trinity holy trinity <laughs> stop stop you get me in trouble you get me in trouble holy trinity is crazy this girl saying all the things that I was saying about how it helps her connect spiritually, but then she realized that those things were all lies and she decided to put it down. And then another video pops up and this person said, I've been fighting myself over this for so long and then I realized the fact that I'm having this internal battle is a testament that inside my spirit knows that this is not actually good for me and that it's keeping me from something. All of these people felt the same thing I did. Like, it's spiritual, it's medicinal, it's good for you, it's natural. And then I get served another video and this is the one that really got me. I didn't even chat. Watch the video. I just looked at the thumbnail and immediately I was like, I'm quitting. It was a video of a guy who didn't smoke weed for 365 days. And on the left, it said day one, lazy and depressed. And on the right, day lazy and depressed, day 365, motivated and happy. Wait, you know what? I also, by the way, I'm very aware that a lot of my chat is very 420 friendly. I'm sure there's probably so many people here that are so high that they can't even fathom what I'm talking about. Hey, hope I'm giving you a bad trip right now. <laughs> um, that does not take away from the fact that weed still is a drug. And if I would come into focus, that would be absolutely fucking amazing. Um, weed is still a drug. And um, I don't really know what else to say past that. I love weed. I don't really know what to say. <laughs> so... Imagine I just did some, like, really motivational thing about, like, it's still a drug, you know? Imagine I just did that. Can't wait to get high after this stream. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but, yeah, just imagine I did, like, some sort of, like, you know, like, P or, you know, PG, some sort of... Drugs are bad. Mm -hmm. Wait, it's that thing from South Park. You know, drugs are bad. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mackey. You know, drugs are bad. <laughs> Use responsibly. Yes. Okay, you're helping me out in chat. You know, weed is still a drug at the end of the day. Um, I'm not pro or against it. Um, know your limits. Be smart. Um, use responsibly. I'm just reading out things people are commenting, so it's like... thing. Why are people calling me a bottom in the chat again? Oh, we're not doing this again. Someone just called me a bottom in the chat again. Why are we doing this again? Fuck ye. You don't know that. I count with the I count with the fucking God's hole and bottom comments. Free me from the hell that is live streaming. <laughs> Free me from it. Okay. Drugs are bad. Okay. Wait, I feel like that's kind of accurate. Drugs are bad. Okay. Stop calling me a bottom. 365 and it said motivated and happy. And the word motivated is what struck me. For the last couple years, I felt like I had all these ideas and plans. Someone just commented and said, the bottom rumors need to stop. Thank you. Thank you. Plans and daydreams. I was in this constant state. Of Someone said, wrong. He's a top with a bunch of like nail emojis. <laughs> the chat is crazy right now. <gasps> chat is vulgar ah. uh. Uh, 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 uh. no ah. 
You guys are gross. Someone said, here comes the bottom police. Creation, but could not execute. Adam, you're not beating the allegation. Everything Fuck off. Just melted. So I quit, but this time I set myself a timer. One year. No more like, oh, let me just like go a few weeks just to prove I can. No. One year. And here's the result. So weed actually changes your brain chemistry. It does have physiological, psychological effects on your brain. I needed to reset my brain, rewire my brain. Oh my God. I did notice changes already. Please, just a warning if you're going to play a fucking light noise. But that's the point where normally I would Ooh. start smoking again. Because I'd be like, oh, I feel a lot better. Like, I can smoke again. But I didn't. And each week got clearer. Hey, I'm in the middle of filming. Uh, Why was this me a couple minutes ago when my friend Jasmine called me and was like, do you want to come to the club? By the way, she did just message me and say, she just messaged me this instant and said, let me know when you're going to come to the club. We're on our way now. I guess I'm going to the club with her and her friend Joe. <laughs> I guess I'm going with them. Okay. Did I think I was going to club tonight? No. Do I want to club tonight? No. Do I want to leave my apartment tonight? Not really. Are we going to quite possibly the worst club in Brighton? Yes. I hate this club with a passion. I do love this girl. I will do anything for her. Let me put my phone on charge, actually. Oh, fuck. I couldn't be fucking bothered. I couldn't be bothered. Um, I'm leaving for LA tonight. Okay. Okay, go. okay bye. I was able to make these major life decisions that I'd been putting off, like moving across the country. <laughs> I needed to make that decision. Where'd you move to? Oh, move back home. Please. I was able to actually organize my life and get things that I've been putting off done. That list would be too long and uninteresting, but just know <laughs> it was good. The anxiety that I was convinced the weed was fixing, which obviously it wasn't because I still had anxiety and thus I was smoking more weed, actually went away, shockingly. Depression lifted too. And most importantly, I... I just feel peace. I am not dependent on anything except the Lord our God, amen. I stepped away from social media at the same time, which is actually my real addiction. Weed, not so much. Wasn't really an addiction. Social media, real addiction. And we'll talk about it. But yeah, I stopped wasting a lot of time on there and also in a lot of other ways. And I'm happy and motivated. It's like I'm the me that I was before I had to tuck her away and hide her from the world. My experience, it was actually pretty easy. I think setting that firm deadline, in fact, no, actually I'm gonna say I know that setting that firm deadline is what really got me there. I'm a very goal-oriented person and very competitive with myself. So when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. So once it was off the table as an option for something for me to do, I just didn't really even think. Okay, everything she's saying here is great. I just don't appreciate the shoving God down my throat. I started to say it and I realized that it was going to be... So I just had to commit to it. That... <laughs> oh, God. Oh my God. Someone just commented, is Joe cute? How do you know that Joe's coming? Oh, I must have said it. Oh, wow. You really listen. That's scary. <laughs> Ooh, that's scary. I was like, fuck. You guys actually listen when I say things. Um, everything she's saying, um, I think is great. Um, I think talking about sobriety, I think talking about, you know, social media addictions, I think talking about uh, different ways people can react to different drugs, specifically weed that's very, you know, normalized in the world now. I think it's really sorry i was just reading chat um i think it's let me not look at the chat i think it's really important i think what she's doing here is good um i think it's really important and it's it shows a lot of growth and i think that i would be more receptive to it if i didn't have this without sounding interesting or without sounding sexual without god being shoved down my throat you know i think if if everything she said didn't have to end with our savior, Lord, and Christ, like, listen, be religious, be spiritual, be nothing. Me don't give a shit. Like, I really do not give a shit. But when you're making a point to me and I start to agree with you and then you close it off with because of God, I'm like, oh. 
think about it as much. And that's not to say there weren't challenges at first, especially. There is that physical and psychological withdrawal, anxiety being one of the main ones. But those withdrawals go away. She says that word so fun, she goes withdrawals. I love it. Relatively quickly, not the physical anxiety that you're feeling from the drug literally like <laughs> leaving your body, but when the stress gets hard, like those moments when you'd normally go and smoke immediately to calm down, those moments will never go away, right? Like there's always gonna be stress. It's just about not needing to smoke to get through them. Like I'll tell you what, dude, and again, a very, very, very great point that she's bringing up here. She's like, I was smoking to get through things. I was smoking to, this is how I was, you know, dealing with it. This is all really great point. This I'm saying over, this is actually one of the best videos I've seen of her recently. Well, again, the, they haven't been great. This is one of the best ones I've seen of her recently because everything she's saying here, I think is important to say. And I think it's important to hear different people's perspectives. And I'm, I'm actually very proud of her for making this video. There's just certain things that I'm like, oh, the God thing just kind of I have such like religious, like, I don't want to say religious trauma. It sounds very extreme, but being forced religion down your throat your entire childhood through schools and different things, specifically when you're told that they don't agree with your lifestyle or like you or would accept you, you're so resistant to it. So I'm like, not fully on board with it because I dealt with so many years trying to like regress it. When I moved, like the first couple months were so hard and so stressful and I... I was having a I was having a tough time. I had a massive breakdown today. Um, it's not okay that I needed to be high to not be a. Bitch. <laughs> so, I really needed to work on that. <laughs> the biggest downside for me still at this moment is that I haven't been able to unlock that creative piece. Whereas a lot of things in life got really a lot easier to execute. Art is more challenging for me. I'm just. Such a it's a great video, actually, person. for her standards. I to just like sit down and enjoy the creative process when it comes to visual art anyways songwriting have to be sober it's weird but there was truly nothing i loved more than smoking and painting literally watching paint dry <laughs> waiting to see what images come forward really rolling with the mistakes and leaning into them letting my intuition take over dancing is also a lot harder and unnatural for me journaling was a lot more productive do you think gabby plays just dance i played just dance recently What did I dance to? I can't remember what I danced to. I was dancing to it. I got at up though. My friend at me up. Um, I tried my best. I didn't want to sweat though, so I did a really bad job. My friend was really good at it though. Do you think she plays just dance? Or do you think she just like puts music on and dances? Hmm. I can't see her playing just dance. Actually, yeah, I can and intuitive. What it really comes down to is overthinking and not allowing myself to sit still. I have a lot of trouble just sitting still and focusing on one project for any prolonged period of time. But when I would smoke, I could sit for days at a time and just focus on that one thing. So I, I do still see the benefits. Like I don't, I'm not gonna be one of those people who's just like, weed has no benefits and drugs are bad. Oh my gosh, I should have worn my dare t-shirt. No, I'm glad I didn't. That would have been too much. <laughs> I feel like it really helped a lot with ADHD, OCD, PTSD, and just other mental blocks. I feel like it, it definitely helps you connect to a different place. And I also okay, and a great ending to this video as well. She's saying what the pros were in her life. Honestly, I think this video is great. No, the editing is a bit obnoxious. The God things, yeah, you know, could do with it, but whatever, it's her video. I will say that this video is actually really good you know she's highlighting you know her struggles her things she liked about it and i think your fire alarm's going off is everything okay or is it false alarm let me know it's oh it stopped okay um i think that this video is actually really good it's educational it's personal and I'm just going to take everything at face value that she says. Also, don't, I don't know that it's wrong or bad. Like it is medicinal. I would rather smoke weed than take a lot of pharmaceutical drugs. Weed is demonized in a way that a lot of these pharmaceuticals are just not. So I'm not even saying like, this is a terrible thing. I'm saying that I had a problem. And if you're somebody who also feels like you might have a problem, then you probably do. So final thoughts. I am really very proud of myself. <laughs> so she should be one year sober is huge and if 
like I said, if this is something that you're going back and forth with, I would highly recommend just committing to one year. If you can't do it, or if you're resisting a lot, or if you're constantly having these circular arguments with yourself, or you're always looking for some type of external validation of somebody to tell you that it's not a problem, your problem might be a lot bigger than you think. Just give yourself a chance and see who you are when you're sober-minded. All this to say, I don't know that I'll never smoke again. I told myself one year and didn't know if at the end of the one year, if it's something that I would pick up again, but I know that I don't need to. And that's a lot more than I could have said one year ago. You know what? Bravo. Bravo. Wait, people are saying that she hates pharmaceuticals. Wait, is that her talking about like paracetamol and like Tylenol and stuff? Or is that her talking? When she said that, I thought of she meant like cocaine. Oh, <laughs> did I misinterpret that? Wait, is she is she talking about like, you know, like tablets you get over the counter or is she talking about like why did i think pharmaceutical meant like heroin i need to go back to school i really need to go back to school actually <laughs> nothing up here there's fucking nothing up here um anyway i think this video overall was pretty good i think she ended it well gabby oh prescription medication okay which is very easy to get addicted to um you know what good for her this is a really big thing for anyone, specifically Gabby, because she was she said she was very dependent on it. I think anyone getting sober is great if it works for them. And I think her having this open conversation is great. Um, I think this was a really good video. Um, anyway, we'll leave it at that. Shout out, Gabrielle.